Hey guys, Tony here. I'm at a secret, undisclosed location in Sydney. You can see the amazing harbour behind me, and I'm here to check out a Beyond Endgame home theatre with 9.4.6. So I'm going to take you through the room, I'm going to show you the demos, I'm going to run through all of the gear, but let's not waste any more time, let's get into the video. To give you a quick background, this room was designed and implemented end-to-end -end by Wave Train Cinemas, which is one of Australia's premier home cinema building companies. I was at the CDR Award Dinner recently, where I saw this room take out the best global winner for 2023, which is pretty amazing, so I had to see it for myself, and was invited by David Mosley to come and film the room and present it on my YouTube channel. This room is super high-end, and while I can't reveal anything about the client or his location, other than it's pretty much an exclusive part of Sydney, we are looking at a bill total value in equipment and installation services in excess of 600,000 Australian dollars. So this has been a real treat for me as an enthusiast of home cinema to see how far you can go with this hobby if you have the means to afford it. We are talking a Christie projector, high-end digital active speakers, plus seating with D-Box to name a few things. And while I won't give a full breakdown, I will give you some approximate pricing for things like speakers and AV equipment throughout the video. There is a lot to cover in this one, but first, if you enjoy home theater tours, welcome to my channel and make sure that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe as I have more tours coming. I will have chapter markers down below so you can skip ahead or come back and re-watch a section that interests you. So when it comes to building out a space, Wave Train Cinemas are responsible for the entire project and oversee every aspect of the room's design, construction and installation. When it came to this room, which has been called the Cluster, David was given the simple instruction of Surprise me! Although in deeper discussions, the client also wanted to be able to play back concerts, so soundtrack reproduction was also very important. As someone who is an expert in acoustic design as well as architectural design, David created a unique look and feel to the room, which was also designed to meet his client's expectations of a high-end room that matched the rest of the home style and quality. As a heritage period home, David drew inspiration from other elements throughout which had gothic vibes and reminded him of a church cluster. There are a number of subtle elements used in the design of the room, such as the ceiling coffers, which are actually covered in gold leaf, which looks incredible, and are gently lit to create a calming atmosphere in the room. Everything has been painstakingly planned and implemented to give a cohesive look to the design and from my own personal opinion, this room has a calming and relaxing feel to it, even without watching a movie. With the lighting on, it's pretty much an impressive space on its own. Every building element and construction work was performed by Wave Train Cinemas. As I mentioned earlier, acoustic design is David's specialty and he designed the room with that in mind, to not only create a visually stunning room, but to also make sure that the room performed in an acoustic and video level as well. The room is 5 meters wide by 7.4 meters long and 3.3 meters high, with a riser allowing for two rows of seating, and these dimensions also allowed David to create a design that would work for both the audio and visual goals of the project. There are a number of bass traps and passive absorbers placed in the key locations to give the room a nice natural sound without any echo or nulls when it comes to the bass. David has the position that you shouldn't need to EQ a room above a thousand hertz and as such has designed the location of passive absorption and diffusion to cater to that based on the analysis of the room. On the walls we have 10 MSR Acoustic DC four 2D diffusers with four MSR DR2 randomizing diffusers. For passive absorption we have the CinemaWorks 100mm acoustic absorber panels as well as an acoustic carpet and underlay to further treat the sound reflections. All of the absorbers and diffusers have been hidden from view by a Snaptex track system with fabric that is acoustically transparent allowing them to do their job and treat the sound reflections correctly. For projection, we have the Christie MK25 series RGB laser projector. And if you know anything about projectors, you will know that this projector is as good as you can get for projection in a home cinema. The goal for the system was to produce between 100 and 200 nits at 165 inches at CinemaScope Aspect in Rec 2020, with the final result measuring in at 180 nits. However, the perceived brightness due to the incredible contrast and saturation of the Christie makes it 
it look closer to 200 to 300 nits. All of this has been set up through the Lumigen Radiance Pro video processor. To improve the contrast and immersion further, we have the Screen Research Masking Screen, which is a two-way masking system for both 2.4 to 1 and 16 by 9. This does improve the black levels and immersion while watching a movie using the trick of the eye. Considering an output of 25,000 ANSI lumens, having a full-on to full-off contrast of 7,000 to 1 and an ANSI contrast of 1,100 to 1, it's pretty great having such a low black floor with a high lumens output projector, which is pretty crazy. The Lumigen video processor was used to handle all of the video switching, and I'm told one of the benefits of going through the Lumigen also benefits the audio, producing a low jitter audio output to the Storm audio processor. The Lumigen is converting HDR to SDR and is calibrated for a gamma of 2.4, which means that you are keeping the black floor nice and low. The Lumigen and the combination with the screen masking system allowed for the presets for ratios 2.4 to 1, 16 by 9, as well as 1.9 to 1, which allows cropping for IMAX images on a 2.4 to 1 aspect screen. To give you a little background on the projector, due to the acoustic design requirements and the throw distance, plus to keep the footprint to a minimum, a specially made hush box was installed vertically and using the mirror system, the projector was mounted as such to reduce the footprint in the room. This was also done in last year's CDA winning room, which I did a full room tour on, so I will have a card up above if you'd like to watch that one after this video. The combination of the Christie projector, screen research masking system, and the Lumigen video processor makes this beyond an end game setup. When it comes to speakers, I can't really show them to you live in the room as they are all meticulously hidden behind the screen and the walls. David Mosley is actually the owner and design engineer of Elementi Audio and has his very own range of high-end digital active speakers. This means that the amplifier is in the room close by the speaker and communication with the Storm Audio processor via a network ethernet cable, which is called audio over IP. The benefit of a digital active system is to provide a low noise noise, high quality signal to the amplifier with a short cable run between the amplifier and the speaker itself. I'll have links to Elementi Audio down in the description so that you can take a look. For the cluster, we have a 9.4.6 speaker layout with a set of side surrounds used for each row rather than utilizing them as front wides. I believe that the decision was based on the limited audio tracks in movies that utilize front wides as your processor needs to have DTSX Pro enabled for any kind of DTSX track or Neural X upmix, as well as Dolby Surround codecs need to be updated to allow this feature. Either way, the focus is on the two rows of seating, which allows for an even and fair experience for everyone in the room. With the surrounds not being bridged, the Storm Audio processor also allows for discrete channels for the surrounds as they are time aligned separately. For the front sound stage, we have three Elementi Sirocco, which are bi and designed for being behind the screen. The HF in this speaker is designed to give a consistent sound toward the listening area using a waveguide. The LF consists of dual 6.5 inch drivers with the left and right speakers having a 10 degree shift in the sonic image to bring the sound closer to the center of the room. They are incredibly sensitive with a 124 dB sensitivity at 1 meter and bring a big sound stage into the room. To power these speakers, there is a 1000 watt amplifier with active crossovers and DSP, which I'll discuss later in the video. For the two rows of surrounds and the two back surrounds, we have the Elementi Zephyr, which can be used as an LCR, however, can be placed closer to the seated area. These also feature dual 6.5 inch drivers and have an output rating of 120 dB and a high frequency dispersion up to 160 degrees. These are also bi with 1000 watts and have been placed in the key positions hidden behind the SnapTech screen system to be heard but not seen. For overhead speakers, we have six Pro Audio Technology SCSR 6C ICA, which were chosen as they have a maximum footprint of eight inches. However, feature a six inch driver with a high sensitivity rating of 105 dB. These are also hidden inside the ceiling, but provide excellent coverage for Dolby Atmos soundtracks. For LFE, we have two subwoofers 
subwoofers in the front and two in the rear. The Elementi Onyx 15 inch was used in all four locations, both behind the screen but also mounted on the back wall in a position to give the best bass response across all seated positions. Featuring a 15 inch subwoofer and producing 120 dB peak output, they go down to 25 hertz in room and are calibrated on the digital amplifier via the built-in DSP. These speakers as a whole have an eye-watering ballpark price of 70,000 Australian dollars and with the performance to match, the room sounds great for both high-impact action movies and concerts as well as quiet movies with a focus on dialogue. As mentioned, I will have links to everything down in the description. Providing all of the signal processing for the speakers, we have the Storm Audio ISP32 Digital AOIP Mark II with 32 channels of processing. This is an endgame processor retailing around 30,000 Australian dollars and can process and send a digital signal, so it was perfect for pairing with the Elementi digital active speakers. This is a processor only, so relies on external amplifiers to provide the power to the signal, and as such, we have the Elementi Tungsten 2 amplifier for the screen speakers and the surrounds, with the Elementi Titanium 2 amplifier for the subwoofers. The Pro Audio Technology DMA 1508 8 channel power amplifier was selected for the overhead speakers. When it comes to the rack itself, we have a Sanus rack which has been meticulously cable managed and I was absolutely blown away by how neat and well done the cable management has been executed for the room. The only two playback devices are an Apple TV 4K for streaming Disney Plus and Netflix and for disc playback we have the Panasonic DP-UB820 which still to this day does a fantastic job. Everything has been professionally installed and planned according to the highest possible specifications. When it comes to seating we have a combination of single seats and love seats. The recliner of choice is the Fortress Crossington, upholstered in Royalton leather in olive finish. These chairs give ultimate comfort during movie time and have been upgraded with D-Box. If you haven't experienced D-Box before, it's a system that provides tactile feedback through the chair using actuators placed under each of the corners of the base. I experienced this at the Cedia Tech Summit while having a chat to David, and while I wasn't in an immersive room, I could tell that there was something to this. It adds an extra level of immersion that you just don't don't expect and you notice it more when you turn it off. During the demos I did like Top Gun Maverick, June and Oppenheimer, it was quite surreal to experience the D-Box in action. It's not like a roller coaster ride but just gives you that sense of movement or engagement which further pulls you into what you're watching. It doesn't come cheap, with a setup like this it comes in around 50,000 Australian dollars for this many chairs. It's the kind of thing if you wanted, you could put it on a single main chair, but the client decided that after experiencing it, he wanted it for both rows of seating. To finish off the room, we have the RTI automation for lighting and cinema control. The idea was for seamless use of the room and for it not to be complicated for the client, rather a focus on the experience. Everything was provided for and installed by Wavetrain Cinemas and I'd like to thank the room owner and David from Wavetrain Cinemas for having me over to experience this incredible room. My final thoughts are that this cinema is quite different from a DIY or enthusiast room and while I do have some high-end gear in my own space, what separates a room like this from something like mine is that the whole build was done without any of the normal constraints that may arise by using a spare bedroom in a home and this allowed David and his team to design the room in a way that didn't require a great deal of compromise. Again, I'd like to thank David from Wave Train Cinemas as well as the room owner for bringing me here to take a look and film his incredible cinema. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and as we move into 2024, there will be a bigger focus on my channel with doing these higher end home theater tours. So if that's something that you'd like to see, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss those videos. Anyway guys, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.